promised you would hold my head, Lord. You promised you would help me stand when the valleys too low and the rivers too wide. You will lead me to the other side. Your promises they light my way and never leave my feet to stray. I believe it in this word. I will overcome, standing on your promises. Praise you in advance for the victory. 
your hand just get me through this storm give me strength to stand get in the darkness and I will sing although my eyes can't see I will praise you for the Charles, would you like to come testify? Praise God, church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord again. You know, it's, it's always good to be 
in the presence of the saints, you know, because it's so much going on that's negative. Everybody seems to be trying to turn us away f- from Christ. But I got something to tell them they're wrong. I'm not turning away from the one I love. I'm not turning away from the one that saved me. You know, I'm not ashamed to be saved, sanctified. I'm not ashamed of being that person that loves Christ. Because that's who I am. I love him. And I'm not ashamed of that. And I think we got to, as, as Brother Anthony said, son, we got to let this fire build up and burn in us. We, 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 get, we got to let it come on out. We, we got to let it outside and let the world see. You know, that, that, I think that's what I want to be. I, I want to be this person, you know, that you don't see me, you see Christ in me. That's what I want to be. That's who I want to be. I want to be the person that you don't see, but you see Christ working in me. I, I want to strive and make myself that type of person. If we can do that, church, if we can just be a walking light that the rest of the world can see, just be a walking witness. You don't have to say anything. Just, they can just see him working in us. Just think what a testimony that would be. I just love him tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to try to sing this song for John Mark. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord another hand clap. Lord, whatever you do in this season, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you bless him, don't do it.
church, Lord God. But use us, Lord God, in this season. Thank you. 
Sister Sloan, do you have a testimony? Praise the Lord. I do have so much to thank the Lord for. I feel so grateful to the Lord. He's been such a, you know, always blessed my life more than I could ever say or thank him enough for. But um, I just had to give a little testimony of what happened to me Sunday is um, I was fixing some food and stuck some chicken in the microwave. When I pulled it out, um, the chicken exploded into my eye. And needless to say, it was really painful. And um, I told Benjamin, go get Daddy, hurry, you know. So I was rinsing my eye out, and uh, it just felt awful. I said, Daniel, please pray for me. So he prayed for me, and he goes, okay. And I was, my vision was all blurry. I couldn't hardly get my eye open. I know something was wrong with that eye. And Daniel, after he prayed for me, he says, now, go rinse your eye out. I said, I just did. He said, just be obedient. <laughs> I said, okay. So I went and rinsed my eye out, and as soon as I did that, it was completely healed. And I just want to praise God for that. Thankful, thankful to him. And I had one other little thing I wanted to say. And um, a lot of you guys know that our van broke down. But uh, what you probably don't know is that when the van broke down, I was driving. I had all four of the kids with me. And the brakes completely locked up. And I am grateful that we were going really slow when the brakes locked up. And I was able to just pull over to a little barn place and pull up the emergency brake and God protected us, kept his hand on me and the children. I'm grateful for that. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, Lord, I am weak, and I am worn, and through the struggles in my life, lead me on with your Lord, take my hand, lead 
Lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storms in my life, lead me on with your light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness Offering music, Brother Harley, but Daniel, would you help us take up the offering, please? This uh, Saturday, December the 17th at 5, leaving from Walmart, uh, the youth are going to a play is it Chattanooga, Knoxville. Knoxville, Knoxville, and they need to, uh, they don't need to bring any money for the play, but pl uh, bring some money to eat on. Every, everybody, everyone is welcome, not only youth, but everyone is welcome to go. And uh, I was, before pastor comes, I got this one little scripture that um, Jesus was talking, he, he taught in parables, and he was teaching one time about a, a wedding supper or a, a thing and, and he was he was giving everyone that was welcome to go he invited everyone jesus invited he invited everyone but everyone that was welcome to go and he, he would give them a wedding garment to cover themselves with it was royalty it was it was the fact that uh, you belong there you're you're with this party you're part of this group and you're you're going to be a part of the wedding and I was, that's just an awesome, uh, Psalms 32 and verse 1 says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And when you looked at these people going to this, uh, this wedding, you, you, you knew that they were all part of something bigger than just one of them. You knew that they were part of something bigger than, and, and it, you, didn't, you didn't see what was on top of them. You didn't see what their past, but their transgression was forgiven. Why? Because they were covered with something bigger than themselves. And I'm so glad I can be a part of a people, part of a thing that is much bigger than myself. And I can wear this Jesus. Why? Because I'm covered. It's more than me and it's more than you. And it's more than the people get up here and sing. We're covered by the blood. And it's a beautiful thing. Pastor.
Hallelujah. Thursday, this little lady took care of me and prayed for me and loved me. She's a little tiny thing, and I'll be going well summers to preach. Mom said, are you going by yourself? She'll be going with you. She said, as long as she's with you, I know you'll be okay. <laughs> so she's my guard, my buddy, my friend. And Thursday, we'll be married 27 years. Give Sheila a hand clap. Come and sing and testify. a lot of calls in the last several weeks of people that are very, very desperate. They feel like that they have uh, walked away from God and the road has been just, you know, the bridge has been torn out and there's no way to get back to God. And I was laying in the bed one night and it was probably three o'clock in the morning and I just kept thinking about that, just the brokenness of people, their hearts are so heavy and they feel like there's no way to return back to the Lord. And then so many scriptures and so many different people in the Bible started rolling over in my heart of how that God, He took care of them. He, he, he gave them grace to get back to Him. And uh, this little song just started rolling over in my heart of how He'll break your fall. You know, we may, you know, fall sometime, whether it's, you know, it's not always sin, but sometimes we'll fall in discouragement. Our faith will be very, very weak. And then we feel so, you know, myself, I always, you know, I feel like I can do this. It's even... I've always been a person I never wanted to lean on anyone else. I always wanted to help carry others. So it's been kind of hard for me to realize at times that, Lord, that there's just no way I can do this, that I need Jesus. And, uh, you know, many times He'll break our fall. So this just touched my heart.
A lot of soldiers going home. A lot of soldiers. Thank the Lord for Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle. Ray Ray told me, Julie, when Ray got so sick, he said, he said, Ray, I'm so glad this didn't happen two, three years ago. I said, why, Ray? He said, I wasn't ready. He said, I'm a winner either way. I'm so glad the Lord didn't take J.R. year before or others. And a church is a lot like an individual. A church has a personality. Some churches shout, some cry. They have a personality. And, and, a, and a church has its own, own character. And you really got to be careful. I'm being a pastor. You really got to be careful when you have a lot of deaths or a lot of tragedies that you don't let a church go into depression. It's just like an, I've seen it happen. And, and we're going to cry. I, I went over with Lonnie yesterday. Betty just left. And I went over and I touched that little old shoulder. And I couldn't hardly handle it. But Lonnie's, Lonnie won't hurt no more. He won't cry no more. He won't have no more battles. No more storms. The last thing Lonnie said to me Sunday morning. Hugged my neck. Seemed like he held it just, just a long time. He said, Brian, you keep preaching like that. You're going to help me get to heaven. And that's why we do this. And sure, we're going to cry. And sure, our hearts broke. But we can't quit doing what we're doing. We're making a difference. And we got to keep doing what we're doing. Because there's another Lonnie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there's another JR. And there's another Eddie. And there's another Ray. And there's another you and another me. So I, I'm, I'm telling you, we're going to cry. I'm going to cry. Little old brother Walker, little Joanne sitting over there crying. I'm gonna cry. I ain't got over Sue's dad yet. I'm gonna cry. And we'll be gathered there Saturday morning. We'll be meeting at Dobson Funeral Home about twelve. The funeral will be about one. I'm gonna cry. I'll cry next week, but I ain't gonna come in here and cry all service because I need the Lord and you need the Lord. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna worship. I'm gonna give Him a sacrifice of praise. I'm going to come in here. I ain't going to, I ain't going to go by what I feel or what I'm going to bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that's within me. I'm going to bless his holy name. Cause somebody's in the building needing a need, having a need and somebody needs a touch and somebody needs to hear from the Lord. And if we need anything right now, we need the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joanne, come in here Sunday morning. We all sit down and cry. She'll leave no different. But if we can get her in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Sue just buried her dad. She come in here Sunday morning. We all sit down and cry. She'll cry. But if we can get her in the presence of the Lord. In His presence is fullness of joy. In His presence there's mercy and there's peace. And it's not always easy to get there. Everybody would be there. Sometimes you've got to fight. Sometimes you've got to push. And sometimes you've got to press. Would you bow your head? No, don't, I want you to sing. But would you bow, Lord, please anoint me tonight. Lord, we, we need help. We, we, we're, we're having too much death, too close together, Lord. But that's why we do this. We know there's an appointment. We know we're all going to make that journey. 
So please help us to not get weary in well-doing. Help us to be strong and to be encouraged and to keep reaching for others. Keep reaching for others. In thy name we pray. In thy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sheila and I were in camp meeting in Alabama probably about 15 years ago, 12, 15 years ago. And a young man that had been around church his whole life came to the altar, prayed, gave his heart to the Lord, just glorious, saved, mightily touched by the Lord. And the remainder of the revival, he was touched. We leave there and go summers and preach, and we leave there and go to a little town, Grantsville, West Virginia. The town of Grantsville is so small. Remember how tiny those beds was? The, the hotel, the beds, is about three feet wide. She'd sleep on her back one night, and I'd sleep on my side. Next night, she'd sleep on... The, the town had one pay phone in it. Hotel, no, the rooms didn't have a phone in them. And these little folk in Alabama, and this is one of those meetings, I don't know where we left. We forgot to tell Mom Day. Nobody knew where we was going. But these folk traced us down, and the, the hotel attendant come to the room, and he said, your preacher win? I said, yes. He said, you have an emergency phone call. And I went to the phone call, and a lady was almost squalling, screaming. She said... My brother just got killed. And it was where we'd been revival. And, and I said, I'm here in revival. And I said, do you, do you need us? Do you want us to come? She said, I need you desperately. I'm real close friends. Of she said, I need you desperately, but I don't want you to come. I said, what? She said, I need you, but I don't want you to come. She said, if you hadn't been here in revival, where would my little brother be now? She said, pray for us, but keep standing there and keep preaching. Somebody else has got a brother. Somebody else has got a friend, a family. So, folk, keep doing what you're doing. Hallelujah. This thing's winding down. Keep letting your light shine. Keep running for Jesus. They, they keep bringing folk to church. Brought little old Vince. Lord, changed him. Eddie, Lord, changed him. Brought little old Pete. Where you at, Brenda? You brought Eddie. The Lord changed him. You brought Pete. The Lord changed him, Betty. Now, Lonnie, he that went to souls is wise. He that go forth weeping, bearing precious seed, will doubtless come rejoicing again. Stand, stand and worship the Lord with me. G, real slow. At night, I lay in bed, and I began to cry. And my mind just fails to know exactly why. I can't explain with tongue or pen All the spirit groans deep within It must be God here in my soul I feel the pull I feel the pull I hear the call I know His Spirit's moving me to give my all he speaks to me and I agree Lord please come come take control I feel the pull I went to hear the word with each line and phrase oh he was drawing me to give a higher praise there's a deep call to the deep like a great magnet pulling me i know for sure that i'll reach my goal cause i feel the pull I feel the pull I hear the call I know His Spirit Lord, I feel it moving me To give my all He speaks to me And I agree Oh, Jesus, please come Come take control, I feel the pull. At night I lay in bed, I begin to cry.
cry Sometimes my mind just fails To know exactly why I can't explain With tongue or with pen How the Spirit groans deep within I feel the pull I feel the pull I hear the call I know His Spirit moving me Oh, it's drawn me to give my all He speaks to me And I agree Lord, please come, come take control. I feel the pull. I went to church to hear the word with each line and phrase. I felt Jesus, He's drawn me to give a higher praise. There's a deep call to the deep it feels like a magnet pulling me I know for sure I'm going to reach my goal cause I feel the pull I feel the pull I hear the call I know his spirit it's moving me Tell him, meek son, give your all. He speaks to me, and I agree. Lord, please come, come take control. I feel the pull. At night I lay in bed. I begin to cry. Sometimes my mind just fails to know exactly why I cannot explain with tongue or pen Oh, it's the Spirit that's groaning deep within It must be God here deep in my soul I feel the pull You ever felt the pull? You ever felt the pull? I feel the pull I hear the call I know His Spirit moving me Son, give me your all He speaks to me And I agree Oh Lord, please come Come take control I feel the pull I went to church to hear the word. Each line in each phrase, he's drawing me to give a much higher praise. There's a deep call to the deep. It feels like this great magnet, it's pulling on me. I know for sure. I can reach my goal Cause I feel the pull I feel the pull I want what I feel tonight Lord I hear the call I know His Spirit Moving me To give my all He speaks to me And I agree Lord, please come, take control. I feel the pull. Hallelujah. 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 I feel the pull. I hear the call. I know His Spirit 
I know it's moving me. Would you, daughter, would you give me your all? He speaks to me. And I agree. Lord, please come. Take control. I feel the pull. really feel the pull in this house tonight I really feel the draw though what a most awesome thing to feel the Lord drawing on you what, what a precious thing to feel the almighty now what a precious thing to feel this God pulling and drawing on you and I Sheila mentioned calls I got a call I'd like for you to help me pray about I don't know how to approach some of this stuff we was in the office this afternoon Somebody would call several times, and I'd called, and they weren't at home, and they'd call, please call, I'm lost, please call. They'd call back, couldn't get a hold of them. Perhaps elder man, his sister answered today. I knew from there, because they were from out of state, they're from South Florida. She answered today, and she said, he's not here, he's at work, I'm his sister, would you talk to me? And I said, yes, she said, can we trust you? I said, well, I'm a country preacher. If I can't help you, I wouldn't want to do you no harm. She said, we're scared. We don't know what's going on. We've never experienced this, and we need help. I said, we would like to help you. She said, my grandma was a, in the satanic worship a high priestess. She said, my mother was a high priestess. She said, in three weeks, I'll be confirmed as a high priestess. She said, we've been all over the world in demonic worship she said we've been visited by spirits we've been in the presence of spirits I let her talk a little bit and I felt I need to talk I said do you know anything about God she said nothing she said well nothing good she said I met religious people I said do you know anything about the Bible she said I've seen them I've never touched one I've never opened one I've never had one in my home and she said honestly now this is this is a conversation she said honestly you're the first preacher we've ever watched she said, we watched a few and laughed and mocked, sat around and giggled. She said, about seven days ago, five, seven days ago, she said, my brother, she said, we're, pack, we're getting ready to go for me to be confirmed as a high priestess. She said, we're making preparations. And she said, we don't feel good about everything. And she said, if, she said, we have people in our cult. If they knew I was talking to you, she said, we'd be in trouble. And she said, we were... She said, a few days ago, my brother's in there. He said, come here. And she said, he said, come here. And he said, he said, what's going on? He said, I feel something that I've never felt before. And, and she said, she said, I don't know anything about your God. And she said, I don't know anything about, about you all. She said, but in behind that screen, she said, I saw a figure and he had eyes like fire. And I told her, I said, I said, I, and I was on. I said, I don't know if you're putting on or if you're real. I said, but it sounds like if you're if you are sincere, sound like you saw. I said, it's the Lord that He described in the Book of Revelations. And we talked a little bit. She's and and I told her about the love of the Lord. And in a in a short phase, I preached her from from the fall of Adam to the God she serves, where our God conquered Him. She said, Well, I'm afraid of what this one we worship will do if we turn from Him. And I told her, our God has greater power. I may believe that. Our God has greater power. Our God has greater power. Our God has greater power. So we've offered them prayer. We've offered them free material. We've offered to help them. Now just see what they do. But pray that he that wins the souls is wise. And if you turn somebody like that around, you might deliver a lot of people. So we just, just see what God does. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. 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 Don't care how much you want God or you long for God. I don't care how much you desire God or you're thirsty for God. I don't care how much you yearn for God. You can't have God till God draws on you. People can preach to you. People can talk to you. They can tug at you, but you can never know God till God tugs on you. No man can come except the Spirit draw him. No man can come. I don't care what you're going through.
I don't care how dry your valley is. I don't care how long this storm's been. If you feel a little touch of God, somehow you're going to be okay because God don't play games. God don't play games. God won't tease you and turn around and send you to hell. God won't tease you if He's cut you off. God won't tease you if He's through dealing with you. Oh, Brother Anthony, I don't feel anything. Something draws you to get up and drive seven woods, seven miles down here in the woods. There's easier places you could have come on a cold on any night. You could have stayed at home. Perhaps you're not climbing walls tonight. Perhaps you're not jumping pews or feeling chill bumps, but I am persuaded there's something tugging at mine in your heart, or we wouldn't even be here tonight. Hallelujah. And before I preach, would anybody lift your hands and say, Lord, thank you that I still feel the pull. Hallelujah. I still feel that little draw. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just want to talk about that pull tonight. Thank God for a God that will tug at us. Thank God for a God that will reach down and tug on my heart and my spirit and draw me to Him. Sometimes, I just will preach tonight. Get all the religious, all the put on and pretend. You may always understand God, I don't. You may can always explain God, I don't. You may always understand God, I don't. I, I, I don't. I, I don't always got the answers. I've just learned to trust Him. I just learned to lean on Him. I ain't no need you ask me why Lonnie's gone. I just trust God. I don't always have answers. I just trust God. Could I have an amen in here? I, I don't. I can always explain God. I've just learned to trust Him, and I've learned God's good and God's just and God's faithful. And He's God. He's just 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 God. I don't know about you. I don't feel God twenty four hours a day. I don't get up every morning and see an angel and have a vision. I, I don't. I don't. I, I was reading over my prayer book, and I think when I recount my request this time, and it's your needs, and I know you pray just as hard as I do, but I wrote it down, and it sure encouraged me, and I know it's your prayers as much as mine. But probably the next time I count my prayer list, it's going to be about four hundred prayers I've seen answered this year. Four hundred little old needs I've seen God turn around. Four. 400 situations I've seen God move in. Hallelujah. 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 I don't mind telling you I've got some names in there and we buried them, but he's still God. I don't mind telling you I've got two or three things wrote down there. I wanted to go one way, it went another way, but I'm still going to pray. He's God. I've got some prayers in there I've not put a check on. I looked over my last year's prayer book. I've got some prayers in there I've not put a check on you, but I'm still praying. He's still God. Hallelujah. I don't know I always understand God, but I always love God. I love God. Anybody be honest in the building? God's ways are above my ways. I don't understand God. When David cried, Why standeth thou far off, O Lord? Why hidest thyself in time of trouble? I don't understand God sometimes when you get in trouble or I get in trouble or one of our sheep get in trouble. And we prayed last week and God turned it around and we're praying this week and nothing's turning around and it feels like God's standing afar off. He may be honest in the building. God, God likes it when we're honest. I don't understand. I don't understand why God lets me walk through dry times sometimes. I don't understand when I'm not playing with sin and my heart's tender for God and I want God and I'm hungry for God and I'm chasing God and I get up at five and I come to pray and I can't see God and I can't hear God and I can't feel God and I lift my hands to worship and it's like talking to a two before. It feels like God's nowhere. But I read the Bible and I found out I'm not the only one that's been there. I, I hear little old David cry, God, why stand it there for? off when we're in trouble there's that's those times I don't go by what I feel 
I don't go by what I see. I don't let my, my emotions overtake me or control me. I set my face like a flint and I stand on the Word of God. I don't feel you, but you're still God. I don't see you, but you're still God. I'm not speaking in tongues. I don't feel chill bumps. All I feel is the pressure of the storm. But I've made up my mind. If you slay me, I'm still going to trust you because I have no other God. I have no other rock like you. I wish somebody would worship him in this house hey sometimes David cried in Psalms twenty two nineteen, be thou not far from me O Lord my strength hasten to help me Job cried I can hear David Wilkerson's going home I can hear David Wilkerson preaching on the righteousness of Job. It's a man who would shoot evil and love God. Job said, I look on my left and I can't find God. I've just lost my, my, all of my truckings are gone. All of my caravan, my camels are gone. All of my fields are gone. The hell's destroyed them. My, my, my babies, I've just been to 10 feet. I've, I've buried every one of my, everything i God's gone. And not only that, my wife's turned on me and she don't have no confidence in me. She has no confidence in my God. Everything precious to me, tangible that I can see is gone. And all I got is you got it. I can't find you. I look on my left and you're not there and I look on my right and it feels like you're hiding behind the lattice and I can't see you but I know that I know that I know that my Redeemer liveth and I wish I could have an amen somewhere in this room if you live for God long enough there'll come a time you're going to have to make up your mind you're going to serve Him because of this book and not because of what you feel you're going to have to make up your mind you're going to have to serve Him because of not what you know and not what you're going through hallelujah I wish somebody would bless Jehovah I wish somebody would magnify him in this house. Hallelujah. You try to serve God by your circumstance. It puts a loaded gun in the devil's hand to fight you every day. But if the devil ever sees, no matter what he tries to do, you're going to serve God. You're going to love God. And you're going to worship God. Job said, I look and I can't see him. I can't find him. Not in his backslid condition, but when he was on fire. David said, the Lord's let me suffer and sacrifice. And I look around and these ungodly men and these heathen and hypocrites, everything they put their hand to is prospering. Everything they do, they're having it easy. And he said, all I'm going to, and he said, it looks like God's forgot me. He said, then I went to church. Hallelujah. Then I went to the house of God and I understood the end. A righteous man will fall self, but I will get back up. But their end is destruction. And they're We're in a Pentecostal church. Somebody go ahead and worship a little bit. Somebody go ahead and just bless him a little bit. Somebody go ahead. Let's just go ahead and have church tonight. Some, could we just have church a little bit in this house tonight? It's cold and rainy on the outside. But could we have church a little bit in this house tonight? Would somebody just bless him a little bit? If you live for God long enough, there'll come a time you won't understand God. If you live for God long enough, there'll come a time you cannot serve God with your carnal mind. Oh, I preached right then. This carnal mind is enmity against God. My carnal mind has no trouble when God's blessing me and prosper me. When my babies are well and your babies are well and there's peace in the camp, my mind can't even wrestle with me. But when I'm doing all I can to live for God and your baby don't get healed, your home don't turn around and your problems are not different, I have to watch this thing right here. And it's not always a devil, it's this carnal mind. Boy, if you really write with God, why is this going by Reba? I wish somebody else would be honest in here. We pack everything on the devil. Sometimes I have a battle with this old carnal mind and it's not lust and it's not lying and it's not cheat and it's not wanting drugs and alcohol it's just wanting to know that God loves me and God's there for me and my sacrifice for God's not vain I feel Jesus in this house tonight Lord why cast us off my soul why hide your face from me? It's in the Bible, friend. Read your Bible, Psalms 88, 14. It's 
This is not a backslid David talking. You read the Quranic logics of this. It's not a man down there living in a heathen life. This is a man seeking God. Saul's chasing him to kill him. In the perfect will of God, hiding in the cave, nothing to eat. This old, this old ungodly king that's forgot God up there living in the palace and David living in a cave. God, why have you forgot me? Why have you hid your face from me? It's those times that make us. It's those times. Love Sheila so much. She's so good to me. But ain't all of our laughter it's just made our good marriage. It ain't all of our smiles. It's the times. Been married about two years. We leave revival and we go out to Tulsa and down into South Texas. We come back and we just got enough money to pay our bills. Come back home and we don't even have no grocery money. We got enough money to buy a pack of hot dogs and a loaf of bread and Last have to make these hot dogs last for three days to keep enough gas money back to get to our next meeting. This was pre kids before John. And, and and Sheila was not grumbling and complaining. You were sorry, preacher, if you was in the will of God, we could do better. You failure, you lose. She didn't tell me none of that. Right before she went to sleep and I, she said, I'm so happy being married to you. She went to sleep and I got up and prayed and I thought, Oh God, I can trust that girl. She'll stand with me in a hard place. I feel I don't build a lot of chill bumps, but I feel chill bumps in the I can trust this God. He's not just with me when I'm shouting. He's not just with me when I'm walking in victory. He's with me when my world's shaking. He's with me when I'm wiping a tear. He's with me when I don't understand life. He's with me when I have questions with no answers. Could I have an amen somewhere in this room? I'm just preaching real honest life tonight. For art the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why I go out mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? These folks are so against me, God, and all I feel is the oppression, and you're not touching me, and you're not moving for me, and you're not helping me. I don't feel nothing. Psalm 71 and 9, cast me not off in the time of the age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. I could go to Proverbs 1 because you said it not all my counsel and you would none of my reproof. He goes and he says there'll come a time your calamity will come and I'll mock, I'll laugh at you. We could preach that. I don't have time. I know there's a God that can separate because you said it not all my counsel. Proverbs 29 and 1. He did being often reproved and stiffened his neck shall suddenly be destroyed in that without a remedy. My spirit shall not always strive with man. I know there's a time he don't draw or pull anymore. I don't even want to preach on that anymore. Here's what I want to preach on. Thank God for every time I feel the pull. Thank God for every time I feel a little tug on my heart. I don't want to build on my deserts tonight. I don't want to preach on my dry places tonight. I don't want to preach on the times that the heavens is brass and I walk the floors. And I couldn't find Him and I couldn't hear Him and I couldn't find direction. Anybody be, I don't want to talk about that tonight. I want to talk about the pool a little bit. I told my friend, I said, probably every wife has certain food she likes to cook. A mechanic has certain cars he likes to work on. Uh, uh, people like certain guns they like to hunt with you. Ladies like certain stores to shop in. I'll preach whatever God lays on my heart. There's some stuff I preach and go home and cry about. I enjoy preaching what I'm about to preach in the next few moments. Hallelujah. I like, I like to think about the times that I feel the pull of God. I like to, I like to think about the times I feel the draw of God. I hadn't thought of this in a long time, but I went through a long desert in the early 90s, weeks and weeks and turned into a few months or something. I couldn't feel God or find God. And I'm preaching up Newport News, Virginia. And right before church, I'm out walking around. It's early Sunday morning, and I'm going to preach in a little church up there. And I'm telling the Lord, oh God, you know I love you just because you're God. I've not been getting all my prayers answered lately. It feels like you forgot me. You're nowhere to be found. But God, I sure do love you. And if this thing don't turn around, I'm going to love you and I'm going to serve you. And God often speaks to me through nature. About that time I'm walking under a tree and that bird just comes and sits right up there 
And it's just like I couldn't screw him away. He just sat there. And I, and I finished my little old the little prayer that had been dry for several weeks and I walked into that service and the Spirit of God fell on me. Hallelujah. And it seemed like He helped me for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I live for the times to feel the touch of God. I live for the times to feel the pull of God. I'd rather feel God pulling on me and tugging on me and I'm working on now. God, let me yield to it when you pull on me. Let me give myself to it when you pull on me. Teach me not to draw back when you pull on me. Teach me not to get busy when you pull on me. Teach me not to resist when you pull on me. But God, if you're pulling on me, you want me for a reason. You want to spend some time with me. I feel the pull. Songs of Solomon. I love this scripture. Songs of Solomon 1 and 4. This is more than a scripture. This is my prayer often. Draw me and we'll run after you. If you'll just draw me, I'll run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in the help. We will, re- we will command thy love more than wine. The upright loveth thee. Hallelujah. Would somebody tell him that out loud? Lord, if you'll draw me, I'll run after you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to give the devil no credit tonight, but our flesh is all similar. And if you go long enough without feeling God, if you go long enough without touching God, it seems like it's a up hard to get back over to get where God's touching you again or God's drawing you again and sometimes you can't do it by yourself you need that great big invisible hand of God to reach down in your circumstance and start drawing you hallelujah hallelujah if anybody's ever been through a dry place and had God draw you back you ought to stand to your feet and worship him if you've ever been to a place where it feel like and the whole lying devil telling you you've missed God and God's departed from you and all of a sudden you feel in the tug of God again and you feel in the presence of God again somebody ought to thank God for the pull somebody ought to say I'd rather be touched by that invisible hand I'd rather be drawn on by that mighty spirit of the unseen God hey hey God tug on us again draw us again pull me again and God if you'll pull me I'll run after you if you'll draw me I'll chase you if you'll tug on me I won't resist hallelujah 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 we'll we, we soon start our January fast I don't know what you call it each spirit or what but Thanksgiving turkey and cookies and cakes and pound cakes Mapled ham and sugared ham. But I want him so bad. God, if you tug on me and miss a meal, I'll do it. If you tug on me to pray, I'll do it. But I need you to draw me. I can't do it by myself. Let's have church tonight. Somebody just get free and say, God, pull on me again. <laughs> pull on me to read my Bible again. Pull on me to read through this precious word again. Pull on me to search these scriptures again. Pull on me to worship again. Pull on me to, to, to just want to get closer to you. Pull on me, Lord. I'm, I'm out of place. I can't get over this speed bump. I can't get past this little old storm. But God, if you'll pull on me. Hey, you'll just pull on me going to be alright because I feel the pull. If I can feel God pulling on me, I know I'll be alright. If God will tug on me, I know I'll be alright. If God will just draw me. Got some good scriptures. Draw me and we'll run after thee. Draw me, Lord. Draw me. Wake me up again at midnight. I'll spend a little time with you. Knock on my heart. I'll, I'll pull aside. Just, just let you deal with me a little bit. Pull me aside from this old world of busyness. Put my Somebody reach for him. Oh God.
Pull my mind, pull me aside, let me spend a little time with you. Draw me, Lord. We don't have to preach on somebody just reach, Lord, draw me, pull on me. When I first got converted, you pulled on me. Pull on me again, Lord. Draw me again. Tug on my heart. Oh, I want this. I'm preaching tonight. I want to spend time around him. I, I, I want the Lord to want me and you. I want him to tug on us and pull on us. I want him to draw us. I want him to desire us. I want the Lord to yearn for us and long for us. I don't want to stay where I am in my relationship with the Lord. I don't want to stay where I am. I don't want you to stay where you are. Don't you remember you when you first got converted, you grew so fast, you give up so many things, you laid aside so many weights and hindrance, you conquered so many things, and you weren't ashamed of the Lord. You carried your little Bible, you prayed, you 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 were the first in church and the last to leave, and you wouldn't miss church for anything. You'd go when you was tired. You'd go if you had to go late. You'd go if you had to leave early, go to work. And you were so in love. You, he was pulling you. Somebody beg you, pull me again, Lord. Dug on me again. Draw me again. Just, just dug in my heart again. Let me know you're dealing with me. Let me feel you, Lord. That's Pentecostal folk. We got to be real careful. We're always wanting loaves of bread. But it only takes a crumb sometimes. Even the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. We're wanting great big things from God. But sometimes I'm satisfied if he'll just pull on me a little bit. Sometimes I'm satisfied if he'll just tug on me. He don't even have to speak a whole sentence to me. And I want him to talk to me. I want to feel God. But if God will just tug on me a little bit. If this creator of the universe. Hallelujah. Does anybody in the building feel what I'm feeling now? And I know this thing ain't all about feeling. But I feel the Lord in you. And I want him to tug on us. I want the Lord to pull on us. Joy, both of you, both of you late, come here just a second. I stood back there. I wish I'd have had a camera. You're just clapping your hands, your little hairs are swaying. We just have Pentecostal church. And this is what I was thinking. I thought, oh God. I'm so glad that mama's not in a bar learning them to drink. I'm so glad that mama's not learning them to curse. I'm so, glad, yeah, I'm so glad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proud of you young ladies. Look back. I saw you worshiping the Lord for yourself. Hallelujah. But I want you to do more than worship the Lord. I want you to recognize the pull of God. I want you, you don't have to, you don't have to be 20 years old. You don't have to be 15 years old. There's a little, little, little boy. Hallelujah. I don't know exact age, but just a little lad. And he laid down to sleep one night and the old preacher got tired and he let the fire go out. But this little old boy, he he felt the pull of God and he didn't recognize it. He heard a little old voice called Samuel. Samuel, and he got up, he ran to the preacher. He said, Preacher, are you pulling on me or are you drawing me? Do you want me? He said, No, son, I'm tired. We, you know, we done had church. We'll have church next Sunday. He said, But I felt something drawing me. I felt something pulling on me. Son, you go back, you come Sunday, we'll have church again. But preacher, I felt something drawing me. Son, you go back, I'm tired. We'll have church next week. He went and he laid back down, Joy. A few minutes later. And, and it can be an audible voice. It can just be a tug at your heart. The way God speaks to me, it's just a thought that I just know. It's just such an impression in my spirit. Samuel. And he felt the pull. And second time, he didn't even recognize it. This is, man, this is what I'm praying about. I don't want God to pull on me and I don't recognize it. I don't want hardly I don't want God to I don't want to be in trouble and God lay me on your heart and you just worry about me. I want you to recognize the pull of God enough to you say, I gotta intercede for Anthony and Sheila. There might be danger on the road. I gotta intercede. Vicky, I want you to recognize the pull of God so much if he lays Sheila on your heart in the middle of the night. You just say, well, I need to call Sheila. No, perhaps you need to get up and pray for Sheila. I want us to recognize the pull of God. I want us to recognize when God's dealing with us. And he came again, Samuel, Samuel, and he got back and the old preacher said, I know what's going on. 
God's looking for somebody to pull on. I understand what's going on. God's looking for somebody to deal with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Most pastors won't preach us or preachers won't preach us. God don't have to go through the preacher. We're not under the old covenant. God don't have to go through the, through the natural priesthood. God will deal with our sons and daughters. God will deal with our children. God will deal with you. God can speak to you, mama. God can speak to you, dad. Seth, God can speak to you. He's got to talk to you. He'll talk to you. I hope you hear this lesson tonight. He said, go, back, go lay back down. When you feel the pull of God, give yourself to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like to preach this, Bill. When you feel the pull of God, son, give yourself to it. What I do, I'm afraid of God. Just say, here am I. Open your heart. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Just say, here am I. Open your heart. Uh, you may have never noticed real close that little picture. That little picture. And some old writer, two or three hundred years ago, caught the revelation. But it shows Jesus standing at the door knocking. Anybody ever saw that picture? If you look real close, there is no knob on the outside. There is no knob at all. That's the only door that has to be open from the inside. Jesus is not going to come up. He's not going to come up. Put his foot on the thing and pry open that door. Hallelujah. John's got to reach on the inside and said, Come in and sup with me, Lord. Come and spend some time with me. Come by and talk to me. Come by and spend some time with me. Julie, for months, that's why you've been here on Friday night. You feel the pull. You feel the pull. That's why you've been getting up and coming at 5 a.m. You feel the pull. Ain't no fun getting up when it's 25 degrees. Ain't no fun getting out of a warm bed. You could pray at home. But she feels the pull to drive down here in the middle of the world. And it don't matter how much God pulls on you if you don't accept it and yield to it. Ain't nothing going to change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when God pulls on you, it's for a reason. When God pulls on you, it's for a purpose. When God pulls on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We look for loaves of bread and often we miss the crumbs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every great oak tree started out as a little bit seed. Ever, ever, ever big pecan tree start out as a little bitty seedlet. How if God will speak to you and you'll give to that, it could turn into something that could affect somebody or change somebody. It could be strength for you or wisdom for you. And here's the beautiful part about it. My sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. The more you hear God, the more clear it comes. The more you resist it, the more harder it is to yield to it. That's good. That's good. The more you yield to it, the easier it is to follow. I feel the pull. I feel the pull. I feel the pull. I'm around 10 to 12 years old. Daddy and mom are going to Cleveland from Copper Hill area. They stop and pick up Lucy Prince, a little fast and praying grandma. They're headed down River Road. They're going down there and they said, Lucy was, she was funny. She's so sweet. And she's kidding mom and daddy about something. They're just laughing, talking. The vehicle gets real quiet. Lucy Prince starts crying. She said, Preacher Wynn, would you pull over? We need to pray. They pull over and they start praying. She felt the pull. Hallelujah. They start praying. Pray about 15 minutes. She said, well, I feel the burden lift. We can go. It's raining real hard and they get on that river road. They said they come around a curve. Now they're coming, they're coming down so they're against a the rock cliff. They come around a the curve. They said, here come one of them 40 some foot trailers. And when he gets in the curve, the trailer goes into a slide and he's bumping the wall. They said he's going too fast and he's, he's coming. He's bumping the wall. Daddy's against the wall and he's just going to, just going to rake their vehicle into nothing and just to a slab against the wall. And daddy said, son, the truck didn't straighten up. The driver didn't straighten it up. He said, if I believe anything, I believe an angel of the Lord come and pick that back of that truck and slid it over. 
And he said, next thing we knew, we're past the truck. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What happened? Somebody felt the pull. Somebody felt the pull. You can change people's circumstance if you'll feel the pull. You can make a difference in people's life if you'll recognize the pull. You can make somebody's load lighter if you'll recognize the pull. You can encourage somebody if you'll recognize the pull. God will use you to strengthen somebody if you'll recognize the pull. God will use you to make somebody's load lighter if you'll recognize the pull. Hallelujah. You can bear something. Somebody's burden if you'll recognize the pull. You can show up at somebody's doorstep at the right time if you'll recognize the pull. Hallelujah. You can pray for somebody. You can stand in the gap and make up the hedge if you'll recognize the pull. With somebody in the building, stand to your feet, say, God, pull on me again. But somebody cried out loud, Lord, pull on me again. Hallelujah. Not just a set time to pray, but God, just pull on me. Hallelujah. Let me feel the pull tug on me. If you draw me, I'll run after you. If you'll draw me, I'll chase you. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. I may have found a revelation in this. If I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up from the earth... I'll draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up. I, I hope I don't have to use this for a while, but I just felt this revelation this afternoon. If you're in a storm and you can't see God, and you can't feel God, and it feels like He's hid His face from you. If you look on your left and you can't find Him, and you look on your right, and you feel like He's hid from the lattice, God cannot deny His Word. And he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men to me. I just wonder, I just wondered instead of in our storms, if we'd quit crossing our arms and grumbling, complaining to God move, I wonder if we'd start worshiping him in our storms. I don't feel you, but I lift you up. I don't see you, but you're God. Hallelujah. You're greater than Allah. You're greater than Muhammad. You're greater than Hare Krishna. You're bigger than this devil. You're bigger than this storm. And he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just wonder if I'd start worshiping Worshiping him when I don't see him, when I don't feel him, when the heavens highly need. I wonder if I'd start wishing, would he just begin to draw me? And if he'll draw me, I can walk out of a storm. If he'll draw me, I can walk out of a battle. If he'll draw me, I can put this thing under my feet. If he'll draw me, if God Almighty will draw on me, I can conquer this situation. I can overcome this battle. If God will draw me, hallelujah, I can rise above what I'm rising. If God will draw me. If God will draw me, draw me and we'll run after you. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. I feel the pull. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It's a voice of my beloved that knocks saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. He's knocking. I hear him knocking tonight. I hear him knocking. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou girded thyself and walked where thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hand, and another shall gird thee and carry thee where thou wouldest not. Then spake he this, signifying that what he should glorify God. When he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. I feel the tug, follow me. I feel the pull, follow me. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. If I'm going to follow the pull, it's got to be less of me and more of him. He's got to be more important to me than I am to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And after those things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of customs. He said unto him, follow me. First Thessalonians 5, 19, quench not the spirit. It was January in the late 80s. Cold, snowy, rainy. Back in Harrison, Arkansas, preaching so far back on a gravel road, there weren't even bridges. When the waters got up, you had to go way around. It, it washed over the roads. There were no bridges. They were building a church. We're in the basement of a church, probably, probably 40 people in this revival. I'd been preaching in this church a, a few years, a few times. Elder man, his wife showed up I'd never seen before come each night the first two nights he just kind of sat there 
third night, I'm preaching about this same anointing. I remember this. This is the type of anointing. I, 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 I love this. I love what I feel in here tonight. And I remember this atmosphere different times of my life. I could take you to different revivals of service where I felt this atmosphere. And I'm preaching and just on God pulling us and drawing us. It's a separate message. What I've preached tonight I've just saw lately. But it's along this line. At the end of the service, we had, we had just a tremendous altar call. This elder man, I remember he's crying until he's shaking. He's probably in his 70s. Then so he said, can I testify? We were getting ready to dismiss. I said, sure, brother. He said, I used to preach back in the 50s. And I got busy and got upset. I walked away from God. He said, I thought I'd come back in a few weeks, and I didn't. He said, I tried to come back to God in the 60s. They went to church a few times, and I didn't feel nothing. I attended a church a few times in the 70s. And he said, it's been over 35 years, closer to 40 years. And he said, this is the first revival I've been to probably over 10 years. And he said, the other day, something just got my heart to want to go to church again. And he said, I said, he said, well, it's been so long, God ain't never going to touch me again. He looked at me, he said, little old preacher. He said, life's few nights God's touched me and he said tonight I broke through I feel him again I feel you I don't know what to say hey hey hallelujah 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 most precious thing you've got in your life is the touch of God dearest thing you've got in your life is the touch of God that's why David's cried cast me not away from thy presence don't take your touch away from me I'm through preaching. Would you stand to your feet? <laughs> Lisa, would you come and sing that song about I feel the pull? I, I mean, you know, we'll stay. After that, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard, it was, it was the sound of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither, and I'll show thee things which must be hereafter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Would you close your eyes and reach for him, friends? Would you reach for him? Would somebody reach for him and just ask him to pull on me again? If you'll draw me, I'll run after you. Can we have just an old-fashioned altar call? Would you come to these altars and kneel for a moment? Would you just ask the Lord in fact first, would you come and thank Him for pulling on me and you? Please come. I'll plead with you to come. Come and ask Him. God, stir the pull. Pull on me. I'm not comfortable where I'm at, but I can't move till you pull on me. I'm not satisfied where I'm at, but I can't move till you pull on me.